is here's the science of what we think you need to be doing under these array of different scenarios and then we want to test how effective that has been for you whether you've adopted it whether you've actually taken it on board and have you been able to build that behavioral science aspect in so it's tuned so it it's increases the likelihood of me adhering to it and therefore hitting my goals yeah so the beta phase was fantastic because we I mean, it was tough. First of all, it was it was really tough to get to get a thousand people that at the time were elite um, or at least very well trained athletes. But the amount of information and the amount of data we were able to get back was phenomenal. So and one of the big we, we've had a range of learning. So we've always looked towards behavioral science in terms of how we've built the intervention. You know, are we trying to, you know, enable somebody? Are we trying to persuade somebody are we trying to train to educate and then specifically okay how are we going to do that what are the active behavior change techniques within here do we need to alter somebody's uh, beliefs about consequences or beliefs about their capabilities one of the really interesting things that came out of the research was we captured some autonomy data on on that group of athletes and we worked quite closely with uh, a dutch researcher elena smith who had done a lot of work in this space as well and we haven't published this yet, but I mean, happy to share. One of the really interesting findings was the level of uniformity in athletes in terms of the need for autonomy. So Elena had done some really nice work before where she had looked at uh, mobile interventions in the Dutch population and was, was classifying people for their level of autonomy. And they were classified as uh, um, expert dependence. So people that needed somebody to tell them what to do. Okay, I'm like, I will benefit most if you tell me what to do, I'll feel most comfortable then at that moment in time. Um, confirmation seekers. So people that wanted to be in control, but liked the verification that this was the right thing for me. Um, confirmation seekers, expert dependents. Um, and then there's another group which were self-reliers. So self-reliers were very much a, I'm in charge, don't really need your input, don't really want, you know, leave me alone. The overwhelming majority of all of those thousand athletes fit into the confirmation seekers bucket. They didn't want somebody to tell them what to do. And very few people didn't want any input at all. Actually, they all wanted to be in charge, but they wanted a verification to say, okay, this is the right thing. And here's, you know, this is why you should be doing what you're doing. And I think from us, Again, we sort of then evolved and we, we did some additional qualitative research. We actually looked at a, a systems engineering approach to acceptability uh, to start to understand the usability and utility of the product, uh, see where it was good, bad, needed improvements, et cetera. And one of the biggest things we found was that when an athlete wanted to know something, you know, there's obviously a higher level of motivation there. The app was acting as a really nice, okay, I can check. I now know what to do. There's a few cues in here that also give me the understanding as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. But the, the previous model is if an app or if a, an athlete wants to confirm something, you then have a high level of motivation. So at that moment, you now are primed. I want to know X. So the action that you take is I need to send the nutritionist this question. The nutritionist may or may not respond with an answer in, let's say, 60 seconds, an hour, a day, depends on if they're on their phone, the access, et cetera. But there is a peak in motivation at that point. And if we can ride the wave and enable somebody to be able to make that decision in the absence of having to wait on an external person to make that. So, oh, training was cut half an hour short. So it got modified. How does my fueling need to adjust this evening? Now the athlete was in the position to be able to be in control of that and have confidence that it was still delivered from an expert um, via the platform. So amongst various other behavior change techniques, I think one of the biggest things we found was this degree of enablement. And also from the practitioner perspective, there's a bit of outsourcing. So you've now got these hours back in your day that you don't need to spend behind a laptop to personalize and periodize plans, uh, calorie macronutrient targets for the whole squad because i mean i've been in squads where there's been 60 people and on a weekly basis you you can't do that for everyone you know you can target some people you can get a generic framework for some groups some groups within the team but ultimately if someone gets modified at the last minute somebody picks up a knock somebody has changes their plan 
Um, now the tool was able to cater for that. So now every member of that 60 man or woman squad um, has access to completely individualized, tailored plans to the unique demands of what they were doing on any given day. So there was a, a significant amount of, of enablement, I would say, on both sides mm. uh, from that side of things.